What up? Welcome to the 49th episode of the Back of the Class podcast. 49? Yeah, man. Damn. 49, one short of five zero, and we are one short of our usual trio right now. Ooh, nice segue. Zach Dion is no Aki. I think he might be. Uh, he's in Miami. He's on, He's in Miami? Yeah. He's getting jiggy in Miami for his birthday, I believe. Wow. Like that. Two Will Smith references in one sentence right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, have fun. Don't get sunburnt. You know how you folks Word. do in the, in the Happy in the sun. birthday. Happy birthday, brother. But yeah, so. He's going to be man bunning it up down there with his oh long ass hair. God. With that humidity. Humidity. So 49, bro. Who you got for 49? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, old school safety for the Denver Broncos, Dennis Smith. And if you're going <laughs> to call me on say Google it. You are goddamn right I did. Because <laughs> if anyone out there has a number 49 athlete on command, I will call bullshit on you too. Exactly. Because there's exactly. no way. Anyway, this is a sad, sad episode, man. Uh, we have to say rest in peace to Q from World Star. Um, the founder of World Star. The founder of World Star, man. A remarkable, remarkable guy. And I love like the outpouring of love and support via social media for um you know for you know people just sharing their stories about meeting him and interacting with him i never met q personally but obviously he's changed all of our lives yeah i knew of when it him comes to hip hop queens right he's from hollis i believe yeah man so. yeah but he started i mean that shit has gotten way game. bigger than i'm sure he ever thought it was going to be i mean Jeez. i can't say that cuz i didn't know him but i can't imagine you think it would become the social media slash right. viral, right? You know, giant that it became. Yeah, I mean, right. it's a thing. It's like in the what's the dictionary? The not the Ebonics dictionary. The what's the the, the, the urban dictionary? Yeah, like world star. It's like the people scream. People that use stuff. that shit as a verb. Yeah, like <laughs> oh, he got world star. You know what I'm world saying? Like star. when that happens, that's how yeah. you know like your venture Word. made it. Yeah, man. So his he is a legend. One of the uh, newer tycoon legends in hip hop because of the way that he adapted video super early online and mm-hmm. l- literally made a destination that you couldn't go 24 hours without seeing. And it was, con- I think, content was a big deal too. Yes, like content. It was. It's that real. Like stuff that it's like a train wreck. You don't want to see it, but you want to see it at the same right. time. That's how it started. Right. Seeing like it's almost like live leak, where it's like gruesome or, you know, mature audiences content. That's basically how it started. No. Yeah. And then they would have like, basically, remember um BT Uncut. Mm-hmm. It, it, that's kind of what World Star kind of took the it mantle was, of. It was right? BT Uncut. It was like E Bombs World. Yeah. Meets like. Just like bum fights, like it was yeah. the 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 greediness that you could find on the internet Word. put there. But then it kind of revolutionized and evolved into a platform for discovering artists, a platform for emerging artists, a platform for a lot of these video chicks and star tenders and all types of crazy stuff, man. But I mean, as of you know, late where it is right now is launching a lot of original music videos a lot of original docs type stuff so where you know it was headed under his vision is, is yeah no amazing, it's man. it's an accomplishment to say the least like that's, it's a and it's still going and it's still going it's lasted this long I, damn how long has world star been around now oh man I'm at well, least I'm, since the mid 2000s right? yeah 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 it's it's been it's been it's it ain't showing like it's going anywhere. Oh no, it's so. just got stronger and stronger where most have definitely tapered off. But yeah, man, so we got to send a shout out, man. RIP shout out to a uh, uh icon tycoon in hip hop, man. We don't get to use those words, you know, a lot, but this dude really did just that for hip hop. So rest in peace, Q. And um that being said, we're going to another iconic tycoon in dude out here jay-z so i'm sure you've heard that title sold uh 33 percent of its ownership to that's a good chunk 
Yeah, to sprint, man. 33% to sprint for $200 million. That's crazy. I wonder what... It's just crazy because Sprint isn't exactly on the top of the, you know, cellular phone provider totem pole. They're right. like, what, fourth? Right. I mean, when, when when commercials are attacking you and those commercials are for Metro PCS, you know you're, like, <laughs> down at the, you know, bargain right. part of right. phone providers. Word, man. I'm only assuming it's probably to do some exclusivity where you could only get the title phone content for so and so on sprint so that's how i mean that's the only reason why you would buy a piece of something no i don't know i forget what i know uh, jay-z's album um magna carta was released as an app i believe for free yeah, I think so. on one platform i think it was a htc integration so it went platinum before it even released or some crazy thing like that because it sold a, yeah. a, a million units for the first million people to download it or something like that, got it free. So, like, that was very successful, you know, for people who were on that HTC phones yeah. and, and for obviously for Jay-Z because that's kind of the new model is, you know, with these Apple deals, with these exclusive deals, you sell your album to this company they it's exclusive to their yeah. people you get paid before it even gets released so i don't know man i think that 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 i don't know what what the what sprint is going to get out of it in terms of exclusivity for sprint users i'm sure they got some type of plan and right. it's not like unheard of i remember verizon a while like back in the day before iphones were even like a big deal right. i think verizon had like their own like performance concert series that they bought something right. that you could only see on like the I lg remember. flip phone yep. so i used to have a little lg flip where you would open it and text inside with the keyboard right i think they used to have like some type of space there to show concerts so like this is not in yeah i mean maybe maybe if if you're a sprint um mobile user then you get title for free that see that would make sense Maybe that's what it is. And then, you know, with the whole data thing, whenever you stream title, you don't get charged any data. That'll give yeah. you incentive. That's, that's definitely where they're going. Where it can't just be like, oh, we're buying 30%, and then we just, you know, right. get we're some going. of that revenue you're making. Cause it has to be a bigger right. business deal. So who knows where it's headed, but the interesting thing was the numbers of for what Jay bought title for because remember, he bought two streaming services and combined them into one and launched Tidal for $56 million. Now, so Sprint gonna, comes and buys 33% of it at $200 million. He just made 150-something right. profit. But not only that, the the, the other sev, you know, 60... He still owns like another... And that's what valued at, you know... 77%. That's, that's, you know, that's a shit ton of money that he flipped in a couple of years. Yeah. It, title hasn't been out very long, and he has been able to, you know, multiply his money. And now what I love to think about is how many rappers have wasted $56 million and not made anything. Puffy. And not shown, not have anything. Puffy's a tycoon. He's not going to ever be broke. He's not going to ever be broke, but he's wasted money on right. Several well, I'm thinking of I'm, I'm thinking of Lil Wayne. Oh yeah. I'm thinking of like you know rappers who aren't even. But it's one thing to be a rapper who doesn't have the the portfolio, much less the backing. Like Jay has money to burn to do this kind of shit to take risks. If you're just a rapper, you can't afford to be taking business risk and putting a lot of your money at stake. Like Fifty. 50 got money. He was fucking up and down, like, oh, right. bankrupt. I don't got money. Like, he has money. He's just right. smart with his fucking dough. Like, right. He could afford to invest in vitamin water and invest in all the other shit. Like, right. saying, like he's he's more than just a rapper. He he became, like, a businessman. He was a businessman before he even started rapping. Exactly. He was a drug like, Nas is on his way up doing the same exactly. shit now. Nas. But like the thing about Nas is that Nas does it quietly, which is my favorite thing. Right. Well, you don't know style. unless you really dig. Like, oh, shit, Nas invested in, what is he, like a partner of Lyft? 
lift bevel. That shit isn't like bevel shave system. That shit isn't on on like the sticker lift by you know by by Nas. Nas. Sweet chick, the the chain of chicken and waffle spots that I love. Like he owns so yeah mass appeal, mass appeal records and the magazine. Like there's so many things. Yeah, the clothing line, right? He owns a bunch of shit. Like there's only a few. But Jay, I think, just does it on a much bigger scale. Right. Because it's news when Jay does it because he's that's big. what he's known for. It's expected yeah. of him to be a businessman. That's that's kind of what, you know, what has been set up. But, like, when you think about, like, a Kanye and the touring money that that he that he comes with. And then, you know, Drake, the um, sweet so summer 16. I keep calling it sweet because Drake is sweet. Sweet Summer 16 <laughs> Because tour. Drake is sweet uh, That was, was the highest boy. Grossing tour in history Yeah you know, but he falls Under that category of He's a rapper That makes good money He's not a I don't He's not a business Man Right I mean but I'm saying He could be I hope people 56 got that. million I hope I people mean, got that reference Come on He's not right. a business man He's sure a business did. man Yeah Like man, Drake so. is not that Drake is a musician first Right he doesn't even act anymore, so he's just a musician. Which is crazy artist. to me because that, I feel like... And dropping Jordans does not make you a fucking businessman. No, no, no. That's a layup. But I always felt like Drake... I said this to Drake really, 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 really early on before anyone in the States really ever heard him. I think maybe even before Wayne heard Drake, I had a conversation with him and I told him, that he had the ability to be the next Will Smith if he played this rapping acting thing the right way because he has chops as an as an artist yeah and as an I mean he, he wasn't a bad chops actor chops as yeah. an actor I wonder why he never pursued it I mean it's funny cuz he did have chops as an actor but when you watch him in like long form music videos he's not that terrible but I think it's cuz he doesn't really care but when you see him on snl when yeah, you see him yeah. at the when SBs, you see him on like, like holy on kimmel cow. doing like on yeah. men on the street stuff like he definitely can i just feel like i also feel like he's smart enough to make himself cheesy on purpose oh yeah make fun of himself absolutely just you know to make that part of his appeal right no you absolutely you can't make fun of the guy who's always making fun of himself exactly like, which is which is brilliant guy yeah, man, but I'm really, really uh, excited. As a title subscriber, like I said, you guys have listened to this podcast 49 episodes deep. I am a title subscriber. I am not. Because I am supporting black business. I am supporting someone who I can recognize, see, look at, who's come from where I have come from, not geographically, but economically and socially. And to see him climb... I'd much rather invest my nine ninety nine, whatever it is, a, a month in him than I would in someone I ain't never met, never seen, never heard of before. That's me. And then, like, you know, again, with, with what I get quality-wise from Tidal, you know, above and beyond. Like I said, every album I've ever searched for, from the Mars Volta to, uh, to Prince to... John Mayer to anything, every Michael Jack over the holiday. I wanted to listen to, to holiday music, I li- and anything. I never, I've never searched for something in title that obviously wasn't an Apple exclusive but they're not new in, thing. Yeah, but they're not in, that exclusive to it. title, right? No, what I'm saying is that only the some misconception that people have is that title is only hip hop stuff. Oh yeah, when in actuality, but it's not. It's their fault because they don't. Cause they don't promote educated. the other hip hop. They promote only their hip hop stuff. Right. I mean, well, maybe they only promote their hip hop stuff to us who who only really look at hip hop, um, you know, outlets. But maybe maybe the rock in the in the country, you know, audience and those platforms have title with those artists at the forefront. It might just be a secondary thing where people. Just like, oh, yeah, I don't do that. And it's like, well, they have other shit, too. Like, oh, okay, then maybe. But right, they don't actively go to title because it has everything. Right. I think it's more of a side effect. Right. As when Apple, like, I remember when the iPhone 6 came out, you know, the U- the new U2 album was just, it was just preloaded there. Right. on there. Right. Like, that's 
not you know they're they i mean apple's smart too they brand they fucking target every oh genre every culture yeah 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 are you one of those people who boycotts companies because they like don't fall in line with like your political beliefs or because i mean you say you support title because no i i understand i've learned early on and shout out again to a queen's native 50 cent i learned the power of a dollar that was the 50 album that never came out on Columbia Records. It's an amazing album. The best album he's ever done. You should listen to it. But the power of the dollar speaks volumes. So if I can, wherever I can spend my dollar, where somewhere it'll impact my community, then I'm more likely to do so. Whereas, like, you're not going to see me in crazy, expensive, luxury stuff because that's not going to ever trickle down into my community. Now, certain things I can't help. I have to feed myself, yada, yada, yada. So there's no black farms that I know of that I can only buy <laughs> black or Puerto Rican chickens, right? But, you know what I'm saying? Like, Excuse if, me, sorry. These grass-fed Puerto exactly. Rican chickens? Because if not, right. I don't want to But it's just no like small business. It. Like, you know that the mom and yeah, pop yeah, yeah, that you're, you're you. supporting a family. I'm not supporting an entity like a Walmart that's like not paying taxes and not paying even their employees what they're worth, and then they, all their money goes offshore somewhere. It never, it never impacts people, you know, who yeah. are actually doing the one consumer. I only, I only ask because, like, obviously with all the political stuff going on, right. like, there's so many companies that I found out supported Trump. Like, New Balance was one where I was like, damn, really? I like New Balance. Right. But it's just so weird because a lot of people are like, oh, boycott that company. They, you know, they supported whatever right. Trump. Well, they supported Hillary if you're a Trump supporter or whatever. And I'm like, damn, like, I wonder, because I found out my favorite beer, Yingling, they're, like, big-time Trump supporters. Yeah, that's a PA. So I found out about that, and I was like, fuck, that sucks, because, you know, I'm not a Trump person by any means. Right. So the next time I went to a bar, I'm like, you know what, next time I go to a bar, I'm going to get something else. I went to the bar, and like, what do you have? And I'm like, fuck it, give me a Yingling, bro, because, <laughs> God, that me not getting one beer tonight is in right. no way, shape, or form going to hurt their pocket. I mean, obviously, if it becomes a movement, which it, right. it's not going, like that stuff really, only certain things really make a difference when they get boycotted. And I like to think more important things, like that's, that's a fucking beer company. But like, look at all the noise about the Oscars last year, and then look at the fucking nominations this year. Right. Every category right. has a person of color. Right. Obviously, last <laughs> year's you know movement and everything that was happening, that shit made a difference. It's How, not a fucking coincidence. Right, exactly. But so, also... Also, there's a lot of really good black movies that came out. No, that's true, but there are also a lot of black movies that came out last year that right. weren't nominated. But no, like, so this year was like the shit that was buzzed about, talked about heavy were the ones that got nominated. So if you didn't nominate oh, yeah, those, that, that would have been just plainly just, obvious. Exactly. Like, oh, so you were, before we kind of knew, but now you just confirm you right. just don't want to. Right, exactly, exactly. But yeah. no, I mean, but if, if we all. Stop supporting things that supported Trump, then it would definitely make an impact. But it would it would take unity and a, you know a straight yeah. up decision. But it also takes that education of like you know um, Yingling supports Trump. Okay, well here's ten other beers that you could have, and you'd be like, oh wow, I, that beer I definitely do yeah. like. I'll go drink that. But you know what I'm saying? But Sometimes it takes a little. I'm more of a environmental friendly person. I won't do something because I know it's like not good for the environment. Right, right. But when right. it comes to that, like, I like that damn beer, man. <laughs> Drink a beer, Juan. Yeah, it's all good, bro. Word. Um, but we'll yeah, so. talk about this 2007. Yeah, man. Seven. It's 10 year anniversary of 2007 for you guys who aren't good at math with an F. Um, and uh, Fuse is celebrating like the we did class last year. Of 2007. Yeah. We did it last year with Class of 2006, and it got a really good response right. on the website. People were checking it out. So this year, we decided to do it again. So, like, if you're thinking of checking out, what well, if you were thinking, damn, what was big in 07 when it comes to music, right. movies, TV, right. who debuted, who dropped their first album, you know, what movies did what at the box office, what show started, like, definitely check it out. You can check it out at fuse.tv slash 2017. You'd be surprised. 2007. Oh, yeah, 2007. My apologies. <laughs> but you'd be no, surprised yeah. sometimes when you look and you're like, holy shit, it's been 10 years since right. that came out? Yeah, man. Or you'd be like, I remember that dude. 
Yes. And I remember that one song. Right. I never heard from him ever again. That, that, for me, when I looked um, on Fuse.TV, it was A Bay Bay by Can You Remember the Guy's Name? Can uh, You Remember? I'll give you, I'll nah. give you a hint. I know exactly it what you're talking about. It has to do with particip- precipitations and winds, and, and it happens in Florida all the time. And they got a team named after just the Florida. Come on, Hurricane Chris, bro. Come on, man. Oh, damn, I haven't heard that name in a long time. Hey, bang, bang. I was like, wow, that was 2007. But, yeah, man, it's good to kind of dig back and see what, what was going on. And remember what was going on in your life in 2007. Like, oh, man, when this song, that's, that's the beauty of music. My kid was born. That's, wow, see? Mine's yeah. too. July. My son was Mine born. Was December. But, you you know, music has that power of being a bookmark, like a time stamp. Like, yeah. when you hear this music, you know exactly where you are, you know what you were going, what's going on in your life. Yeah. See, that's I'm more dope. of a movie tv so like i was looking at the stuff that we had up and like i completely had forgotten that that was the year we got that abomination of a spider-man movie oh my god that i won which time spider-man 3 okay the toby Maguire run oh one no one was all right two was great i like two three was just like stepping on my nuts, bro. Like that was a swift kick. Is how bad that movie was. Who else was. was in three so that I can get? Uh, Topher Grace that. from the '70s show played Venom, which off the oh, bat was wow. like the worst casting. Oh wow! Yeah. Ever. And I like Topher Grace, but yeah, that was terrible casting. And then you know, obviously James Franco was still in it because he played Harry, but they made him into like this hybrid Green Goblin snowboarding. It was just fucking awful. Terrible. And Zach's favorite person, Kirsten Dunst, is Ooh. in it. That's my man's trigger. You say Kirsten Dunst, and it's like Kill Word. Bill. Exactly. You hear the stuff. <laughs> Zach no, starts turning crazy. tables over. That's crazy. But the good stuff that came out that year was No Country for Old Men came out, which oh, is that was fucking such sick. a good movie, man. Uh, I Am Legend came out that year. That was I. Really? I'm, you're I'm, and you're a swole, and you're a Will Smith guy. Yeah. Super bad came out that year. That I remember Super, and that so did not. I didn't even realize we got Super bad and knocked up on the same year. Wow, two funny ass movies. Really? Yeah, dude, we got them on the same year, which was pretty crazy. That's re- yo. You know what's crazy too is I remember because my wife was knocked up. Yeah, so was and mine. I went to take her to see the movie one night. She was pissing me off so bad the whole day. And you know when when your wife is pregnant, you can't. When she pisses Mm-mm. you off, you can't do anything you can't about it. You, you have to in, yeah. be like the biggest punk in the planet Earth yeah. for her good. Just tuck your tail in and exactly. walk Exactly. So I took her to see the movie, man. And like it was so good to just laugh, laugh, laugh. And like she could relate it to certain things. And That's the thing. Like, that that movie dope. was funny, but I was we were having our first and only kid. Right. That shit opened my eyes. Like a lot of parts of people were laughing. I was just like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like that. Like that, that one fun. That movie was an eye opener for what, sure, man. dude. Um, we also got the first Transformers movie, which I don't know if it was a good thing or a bad thing. I don't I think like the movie the was bad, but it started the run where like oh, yeah, it, it did so good, and they started just kept churning them oh, out, yeah. no. and it's more and more of just like machines doing stuff, and you can't tell what's happening because <laughs> of those shots and yeah, Michael Bay. Michael oh, Bay. Man. No, the first one with, with Shia LaBeouf was dope, and what's her face? Hot chick uh, with Megan the weird Fox. fingers. Yes. Hey, Megan <laughs> the Fox. The weird thing. Yo, she's never anything. gonna live that shit down. The weird fingers, ever. bro. Can't can't rock with the weird fingers. But she she was smoking hot in that movie. She was. And it, that movie was dope. Yeah, it was it was no, it was Shout it was out to Bumblebee. Movie. And I hated, of course, the black transformer jazz gotta talk. Real hip hop and real j- what's up, little bitches? And all types yeah. of ignorant stuff. You know who did the voice for that, that, right? I don't know his name. I just know it's Eddie from fucking Family Matters. He did no. the voice for Jazzy. Yep. That's terrible. And it was man. a Pontiac Solstice was the car. And, of course, who died? First? I think first and only. And, I'm pretty yeah. sure he's the only one of the oh, Autobots man. who died. I'm telling you, yo, Hollywood be sending bad <laughs> subliminal messages. Come on, man. Yeah, it was so like, I remember a friend of mine was like, I love that movie up until Optimus Prime said, my bad. And then he was like, fuck this, I'm out. Because they, you know, they conte- they try to contemporarize everything. I hate that too. But you, you write about that jazz shit. Like, it was so Come blatant. On, like, man. what up, bitches? Right. It's like, why? Why you gotta be like that? But like, yeah, it's just. 
no no other transformer in the universe it's so blatant. It's so hood and so horribly depicted like a black yeah. dude my name is jazz <laughs> really <laughs> and you're a pontiac really pontiac solstice come on man to round out the nerd movies that came out that year, 300 also came out, which is pretty... Yo, I rock. Probably I rock. the only... No, actually, no, because I really like Watchmen, but, like, one of the only few Zack Snyder movies, because that Batman v Superman abomination... Ugh. I, I mean, I guess I shouldn't say abomination, because I didn't absolutely hate it, but I didn't, by any stretch, love it. <clears throat> by any stretch. But that movie stretch. basically made Jar Butler, because after that, he was a fucking star. Oh, he was star. the man. Oh, yeah. He's but dude, kind of faded a little bit, but... That movie was unreal. Again, another movie where the first black people to die... <laughs> like, they kick, and, he and kicked the, the, the Persian yeah. dude and into the, the well. And it's the rational guy who goes, This is this madness. madness! Yep. Yo, he straight kicked the black... I'm like, yo, come on, man. Why <laughs> you gotta kick the black dude down, like... See and yo y'all y'all out there in podcast land be thinking that that Esteban is mad racially sensitive, but as you can see, there are many an example of the black man getting shat upon <laughs> in Hollywood. You remember your favorite movie, Jurassic Park? You remember the old first one to get ate by a damn dinosaur? It was the black dude who was one of the 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 wranglers trying to close the cage. Oh yeah, ate my man. Sam Jackson died too in that movie. And see, come. But I'm, that just died in. I'm out, movies. man. I'm, I'm out. I'm out of this podcast. So, um, this is actually pretty fun looking at these. So, TV shows that turn ten, dude. The Kardashian show has been going on for ten oh, seasons, dog. That's right, because those little chicks. I remember those little chicks. Now they grown women. Yep. Ugh, The Big Bang Theory. I hate that show. That's a great show. Shut your mouth. And I'm a nerd too, and I don't like that show. But that's ten years old. There's a whole bunch of these that you would not. Stop spoiling it. Go. I'm to just giving a few. I'm giving them a taste. Slash twenty seven. Seven. Two thousand seven. And go enjoy your life, man. Looking down memory lane. I think that'd be dope. Ooh, iCarly. I remember that. Yo, that was dope. I used to watch that with my son a lot. Anyway, what are you listening to this weekend? Uh, this weekend, Anything? I don't know if I'm gonna listen to much music. Why? What do you got going on in your life? Um, I want to go see that fucking movie Split, man. What the heck is I that? I vowed I never go that. see another M Night Shyamalan movie oh, after getting shafted. I can't. The last couple times, but the last. I hear. Times. I hear this one's really good. I have it on good authority, aka my friend Brian, who's like a big movie guru, that said it's it's actually really good. So really? and you know you know M Night Shyamalan be bringing them twists. Oh, boy. Just it's not always a twist that. You know, makes the whole movie worthwhile. Uh, but apparently, this one does. So I might check that uh, out. Ah, uh, uh, listen, he's from Philly, and you know, there's not a lot. And they shot from Philly. Yes. Get man. the fuck out of here. What? Holy shit! And just now, you come. All of his I, movies are based in Philly, dog, bro. Dog, no one comes out going, "Yo, I'm from Philly." You gotta like be from Philly to know a person is from Philly. I never knew he was from Philly. This hurts my heart. So Wait, much. so is the village? Yes, that's outside of Philadelphia. It's like Bucks County. Get the fuck yeah, out of here. Yeah, that's why Unbreakable was in Philly. Yo, dude, I didn't know that. He did a movie with Will Smith and his son. I mean, come on, dude. Oh, they did that stupid show. That... First of all, that movie was amazing. You watch your tone. I don't know. That shit was pretty bad. That shit was me. amazing. Anyway, I'm going to be listening to this dude from the UK in it. His name is Wiley. Wiley? Yeah. As in Wiley Coyote? Kind of, yeah. I'm already, I'm already in. That's it. That's all I need. <laughs> so he is like one of the godfathers, OGs of grime, hip hop in, out, in, out in London. And it's out in the fitting estate. On, in, the, in the estate on the roads, <laughs> doing road man things. You get me? He, um, his, his album is called Godfather. And he's like the OG, one of the most respected grime MCs. So... Is he, uh, is he the guy in the roller skates in that one video? <laughs> <laughs> Heck no, One of the man. greatest videos Yo, ever in the internet. Yo, the estate I'm going to watch that shit when I get to my desk. Buck. It needs to happen. Yeah, because that shit, that was just hard. thinking about it, it makes me fucking smile. <laughs> yeah. Yo. Oh, my what's God. The name no. of the, what's the name of the project? Godfather. Godfather? Is the name of the album. I'm going to check that out. And, like, not like most, like, um, you would expect, like, for, for, for most MCs that who, who, you know, are OGs. 
grime out there in, in, in London is still relatively young. You know, hip hop yeah. is, you know, approaching forty. Grime may be approaching twenty. Yeah, it I think it's still like in its very infant stages. Because yeah. even like the most jaded hip hop fan are not they might be familiar with one or two. Right. Like oh, some yeah. of the biggest, like maybe gigs or um right. Who Skepta. Or Skepta, yeah. Like right. but like but for the most Dizzy part Rascal. I think it's an untapped Oh yeah. Like Tiny Tempas from over, but nobody Ooh. really like no one like Right. Everyone knew him because of the one big ass song he had with um the name escapes me that he featured on. That was like a number one hit. Like who Rita? A couple years ago. Nah, was he was, he was, it was like Tiny Tempo and like a band I think that he just featured on. Oh, that was the um Oh man, Swedish House Mafia. Yeah. Holy. So like cow, but like that was a f- to a that was a hit, but no one knew who the hell he was or like right. he was Grime. Yeah, man. And that his album was amazing. That he, was my favorite album of 2010 was his album, like hands down. That album. And they have man. dope names out there. Word. And it also like I don't know. It's like a nice little switch up from the typical shit you see here in yes. hip hop. Like the way they shoot their videos. Right. The production is super like way different. different. Like their their vision for their music too. It's like it that fucking uh, JME. Like yes. just watching their videos. Right. They're so like different. Yeah, man. It's, they're refreshing. It's, right. Because they they're still at a point where it's not commercialized. So it's not a machine behind it that's with the attempt to sell records mm-hmm. they're literally trying to be different from each other they're trying to be original exactly. they're trying to have their own sound come from you know north london versus south london versus you know peckham and all of these other different places and so it's still dope to watch an emerging scene and not like the hip-hop fads that kind of pass here where like hyphy was hot for a week and then crump was an actual mm-hmm. s- form of music subgenre, whatever like you know and you got uh I forget what it's called in in Chicago, but it's like some other killer some, music. I don't yeah. know. The fuck, there is another way to call called. it. Oh, uh, I know what you're talking about. I just saw it on somebody's yeah. fucking Sheesh. trill. No, drill, drill, drill music. Yeah. So like you know, it, the, these things kind of come and go, but but sometimes it's a good thing because everyone loves when the shit is underground, and once the mainstream gets a hold of right. it, it becomes something else, and right. and like because it happens a lot, like. Not even like when you're that this person like oh once you went mainstream they suck. It's like once everyone else gets their hands in it and puts in their two cents and then how they think it should right. be, it's completely something Doo-doo. different and then it fucking blows. Yeah, man. So I'm gonna be listening to Wiley. Does Big Sean's album come out this week or no? It's February. I think, it, I think yeah. it's February. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really all I'm really waiting on. I'm enticed yeah, for that. I don't think I'm really. Yeah, I think I just want to see that movie and play some of that Resident Evil Seven. Cat. Yeah. Boy. Needs to happen. Anyway, hope you enjoy your life this Word. weekend. And we'll see you next Make sure week. you check out that class of 2007. Yeah. There's really good shit on there. You're going to enjoy it when Peace. you check it out. Peace.